band stuff. Today I'm going to talk, be talking about something that we all have to experience, whether you're a coach, whether you're a band director, choir director, whatever it is, there's that time pre-game or pre-halftime or pre-contest where you kind of have to know just the right thing to say and how much to say. And I have some ideas that are obviously just my personal opinion. There's not necessarily a right or wrong, but I hope you'll think about some of the things I have to say. You know, there's kind of a high standard set a lot by movies. Uh, you know, one of the things that I really like about sports movies a lot of times is the inspiring speech giving, given by the coach. You know, that halftime speech that, that's awe-inspiring and adrenaline pumping. The players remember the rest of their lives and see it as a life-changing event. But the reality of the situation is, in my opinion, the kids are not going to remember what's a, much of what you say uh, at halftime or right before a game. And I know I coached my kids for many years when they were younger in soccer and basketball and football, and I can only remember one thing that I said. And fortunately, that one thing that I said was at halftime once, and it actually worked. At halftime, we were losing by 20 points, and by the after the comments I made at halftime, at the end of the game, we were only losing by 28. So, obviously, a very inspiring speech. Uh, there's one other speech that I remember that I wasn't there for, but my kids told me about it, uh, that I think actually was pretty memorable. Uh, their basketball coach one time, when they were in elementary, uh, uh, at halftime, he's kind of upset uh, in that they were not hustling enough. And he looks at him and he says, do you guys like chicken? And they said, yeah. And he goes, do you like chicken legs? Yeah. And so he says, well, I want you to get out there and pretend that basketball is a chicken leg. Now go get that chicken leg, you know. And, uh, and they played great the second half. You know, Colonel Sanders would have been proud. But with that being said, I believe most pregame and halftime speeches that we get to fire them up and impart a lot of last minute information are really not all that effective. So if, if not, then why do we do it? I think the first thing is a lot of times it makes us as coaches or band directors, uh, makes us feel more comfortable. We kind of feel like we have said everything uh, and kind of gotten it out there. But really, if we have done our job during the week we have trained them properly, they know what to do and they don't need to be given a tremendous amount of information or a tremendous amount of motivation because we've already done that during the week. When it's pre-game or halftime, it's just time to go out there and do the job that you've been taught during the week. One thing that used to amaze me as the greatest basketball coach of all time, in my opinion, is John Wooden. And if you ever watch John Wooden in old clips of him on the sideline, he had this rolled up piece of paper and he was just amazingly calm on the sideline. He just sat back and just watched all of them play. But I think you contrast that with a lot of coaches that you watch who are running up and down the sideline, yelling at their players, the whole game telling them what to do, makes me wonder what have they been doing during the week? And in some ways it shows a lack of trust in the players doing this constant screaming and yelling about and telling them what to do. And so, most of that should take place during the week, so your last minute instructions can be a lot shorter and more pointed and nothing really new but maybe a slight review. You know, last minute cliche field statements like, you know, stick to the plan, fulfill your destiny, we've got to do what we've got to do, and treat it like it's life or death, usually just kind of bounce off you know, these calloused eardrums of our uh, players, our band members, and don't really do any good. But I will tell you, if you're really into the pregame speech kind of thing and great halftime speech kind of thing, there actually is a website for you. Yes, uh, the internet has about everything, and they actually, there actually is a site called pregamespeeches.com. Uh, if you really still want to give these big, exciting pre-game and halftime speeches, you can actually find speeches on the, the website. They have very interesting titles uh, like Win One for the Gipper, Give 100%, uh, and When Tragedy Strikes, and things like that. And I'm not knocking the website. I, I think it's a good website if you really want to find something good that you could say. Maybe it'll, it'll inspire something. And again, I'm not telling you not to say anything, but keep it short and effective. 
So I've been telling you kind of what not to do. So let me give you suggestions on what I think uh, is effective. And I'm gonna talk about four things. Number one, make sure that you know what your students need. Every year, your group is probably gonna have a slightly different personality, and you kind of need to modify what you say based on that group. You're gonna have some groups that are normally very, very motivated, very, very excited, and you don't need to do a lot of rah-rah stuff with them. You know, where you know, some of the other groups are maybe a little less uh, enthusiastic, a little less outward, and maybe you do need to put a little bit of, of fire under them. Younger, inexperienced groups may need a little bit more information, a little few more reminders than others. And if you have an experienced group, maybe you don't need to say much at all. And then also some groups are maybe perform better when things are a little looser. And then you might have another group that operate at their best when you have a little tighter rein on them, but it's up to you to decide. And don't just use a one size fits all approach when you're talking to them right before they perform. Number two, as I mentioned before, keep your last minute instructions short and simple. Give them a few pointed reminders and then just let them go. And also do your best to avoid introducing new information. Because if you're doing that, obviously I meant you probably should have done that during the week to get them ready. But if you introduce a lot of new information, they can really have brain overload and things can really be disastrous. Spend most of your time just giving brief reminders of what they need to do and not new information. And finally, number four, be positive. You know, negativity only causes more stress and I think has great potential to detract from a performance and saying something like, if you do this as terrible as you did on, at our last practice, this is gonna be a disaster. To me, that's a counterproductive approach. Find positive things to say and build them up. I hope these comments have, will help you get the best out of your band. So, so go out there and make sure you leave it all on the field. And remember that other band, they put their band pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. Now go get them.